Andy Warhol, had a very complicated relationship with death. He'd experienced death early through the loss of his father when he was only 14. And of course, with the shooting in 1968, when he was clinically dead for several moments before being miraculously revived. After the shooting, Andy led a completely different life. No longer were the doors thrown open to welcome in anyone who wanted to cross his threshold. The days of the Silver Factory and its parties were over. By the mid-1980s, Andy had a actually a renewed interest in life. That's why this picture in so many ways is completely ironic in that just six to eight months later, he's gone. Warhol threw the depiction of celebrity after celebrity from Marilyn Monroe to Liz Taylor. Later in life, Dolly Parton, Muhammad Ali, the list goes on and on. There are dozens of the most famous people in the world. He, in turn, really started to fuse with them in terms of his celebrity status. Andy had an incredibly close relationship with London-based gallerist Anthony Dauphet. In contemplating a show together, the idea of the Frightwig self-portrait came up. By the 1980s, Warhol really, truly was a global celebrity. It made a lot of sense that he wanted to portray himself as larger than life. Warhol's wig was a constant in his life from the early 1960s. To make that even larger, to build on that power, he decided to blow out his wig spray it to the nth degree and make himself this massive entity to say, world, deal with me. This particular painting is an extremely fantastic condition. It looks as though it was painted yesterday. It's an incredibly clean screen and really becomes this almost haunted image, but in a good way. The ghost of Warhol is looking out at us and it is incredibly striking. It makes a very impactful statement. Andy was here.